please welcome John Coonrod from Rogers Corporation. Thank you. Good afternoon all. I'm going to be talking about uh, millimeter wave uh, material concerns and also some circuit uh, concerns at millimeter wave frequencies. Uh, as usual, I got probably too much information for the time I'm going to try to hand out, so it's going to go a little fast, but I, I apologize. We can always talk about the details later if you'd like. Uh, so I'm going to go through the agenda shown here where I'm going to talk about insertion loss in a general sense just to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, after that, then I'm going to talk about some of the material properties that are uh, critical for millimeter wave applications, and then I'll give you some uh, examples of some of the measured results that I have. So insertion loss, uh, a lot of this I'm sure you're very much aware, but I like to make sure we're all on the same page. And insertion loss for a microstrip transmission line, which is mostly what I'm going to be talking about, is made up of four different components. There's uh, conductor loss, dielectric loss, radiation loss, and leakage loss. Uh, for what we're talking about today, I'm not really going to talk about leakage loss much. And as a general comment, leakage loss is usually not that big of a deal uh, with printed circuit board materials being very high volume resistivity. There's definitely some exceptions there, but that's just kind of a general comment. Radiation losses, I'm not going to talk too much about that. Probably focus more on conductor losses and dielectric losses. So uh, this chart's kind of an eye chart, and I'll explain it, but this is a, a good thought process, I think, about how the different components of loss uh, are dominated by a thickness or uh, a certain uh, substrate of material. So what I've done here is actually uh, measured uh, three different sets of circuits. Uh, they're using the exact same materials, it's all 4350B, uh, and they're different thicknesses. Uh, the chart on the left is the thinner circuit, 6.6 .6 mil thick. Chart in the middle is a 10 mil thick circuit. And chart on the right is 30 mil thick. And all these circuits are 50 ohm microstrip transmission line circuits. And uh, to begin with, let's start with the chart in the middle that has a legend. So the thicker curve, unfortunately, can't get the pointer, but anyway, the thicker curve is actually the measured results of the circuits. And these are, again, 50 ohm microstrip transmission line, 50 mil, um, 50 mil transmission lines, and 10 mil thick circuits. So the model that I have are the other curves, and the models using Hammerstead and Jensen closed form equations. What I like about this model is it breaks down the conductor losses and the dielectric losses, so you can kind of dissect how much of these losses are really coming into play. So for the 10 mil thick circuit, you can see the total losses, the green curve matches pretty close to the measured results, so I think the model's okay. But what's nice is it tells you how much of the conductor loss and, radi and um, dielectric losses are contributing to that. And in this case, for the 10 mil thick circuit, the conductor losses, the red curve, is actually the dominant factor. Dielectric losses are really not dominant. If you go to the thinner circuit, the 6.6 .6 mil thick circuit, then what you find is the conductor losses dominate even more. And that's actually why you see the insertion loss shifting down so much is the conductor effects are actually coming into play even more. The thinner you go, the more the conductor effects matter. Now, if you go on the flip side of this, the 30 mil thick, uh, 30 mil thickness, you see that the red curve, the conductor losses are not the dominant factor. So for a 30 mil thick circuit, the dielectric losses are what you're interested in. And just as a real life experience kind of thing is, we have customers using 6.6 .6 mil uh, 4350B, has a certain amount of insertion loss, and sometimes they want to improve that, so they come to us and say, uh, we'd like to use another material that's lower loss. And uh, maybe 3003 that has a very low insertion loss or low dissipation factor. And what we normally say is uh, you don't want to really do that, actually, because the dissipation factor is associated with dielectric losses, and that's not the main component here. The real thing that you want to adjust is the conductor effects. And the conductor effects are really, in this case, dominated by the roughness. So in the case of the 4350B, it's uh, got two options. One's a standard ED copper. It's relatively rough, which is shown here. Or you can use a low pro copper that will actually be much smoother and will shift up the conductor losses dramatically and the insertion losses will decrease a lot. So in the case of a thin circuit, you want to look at conductor effects. A thick circuit, we have customers using 30 mil 4350B and they will say, well, it's good material, but we want to improve our losses a little bit. So we know smooth copper means less losses. And in this case, we go, no, you don't want to use low pro. Actually, what you want to do is go from 4350B to 3003, something with lower dissipation factor, because it's the dissipation factor that's actually dominating this. So you want to adjust what loss is actually dominating. So that's a good way to think about how the different losses actually affect uh, the overall insertion loss as a thickness of the circuit. Dielectric losses, I'm not going to talk about that much. There's not really too much to talk about. Uh, they're mostly uh, due to the dissipation factor, or the tan delta. 
Um, and in one case, if you want to think of it this way, when you add solder mass to a circuit, you're really adding a component to the adds to the dielectric losses. If you actually add uh, ENIG or a plated metal finish, what you're doing is actually adding to the conductor losses. So solder mask is adding to the dielectric losses and it will add to the losses of a microstrip and even more so to a grounded coplanar waveguide. And then for conductor losses, they are frequency dependent and that's mostly not completely, but it's mostly due to skin depth. And uh, anyway, the, the skin depth will change with frequency. The higher you go, the thinner the skin depth and conductor losses will adjust with frequency. So conductor losses are frequency dependent. And the way to think about conductor losses in terms of copper surface roughness is that uh, when the skin depth is in the range of the roughness of the copper, that's when the roughness of the copper will start to dominate the conductor losses. So as an example, I've got a table of information here that's showing frequency and copper uh, skin depth, and then the typical coppers that's used in the microwave, millimeter wave range of frequencies, and then a typical roughness. So if you're using a high profile ED copper, about 2.2 roughness, and you're around about uh, 500 megahertz, 0.5 gigahertz, uh, really the roughness of the copper is not coming into play because the skin depth is about 2.95 microns, the roughness is about 2.2. If you use that same copper at about 5 gigahertz, then you can see the skin depth is much lower. So now the, the copper surface roughness of the copper really is coming into play and it is going to dominate the uh, conductor losses. Now if you go on the flip side of that, much smoother, 3000 or the um, rolled annealed copper is a very smooth copper. Uh, if you're at 5 gigahertz again, where the skin depth of copper is only about, uh, what, 0.93 or so? This smooth copper is really not, uh, the copper roughness is really not affecting the conductor losses. Once you get up higher frequency, like 10, 20, 30, around 50 gigahertz is where you got to be before the roughness of the rolled annealed copper actually starts impacting the conductor effects on rolled copper. Uh, and then to kind of um, drive this point home a little bit more, the, uh, what I did was look at some circuits made on 3003 of different thicknesses and different copper types. And what I did was I used uh, 20 mil 3003 with uh, rolled copper, 20 mil 3003 with ED copper. Rolled copper is very smooth, ED is rougher. The difference between insertion loss at 25 gigahertz is about 0.1 dB per inch. Now if you go thinner on the same material, 5 mil 3003, you can see there's a big difference between smooth rolled annealed copper, rough ED copper, about 0.35 dB per inch. So this pretty much shows that a thinner circuit is more affected by the copper effects and the copper effects in this case is going from a smooth copper rolled copper to a rougher copper ED copper. And then uh, radiation losses, I'm not going to talk about that a lot, uh, except basically they're frequency dependent too. The higher the frequency, the more radiation loss you have. Uh, the thicker the circuit, the more radiation losses you can have. And also dielectric constants, uh, inverse related. Higher dielectric constant, lower radiation losses. Uh, but as a general rule, a lot of the millimeter wave uh, circuits that you'll see are thin circuits. And the reason they're thin circuits because that helps minimize radiation losses. A thinner circuit has less radiation loss. Uh, this is a study we did some time ago, and this also has to do with why circuits are thin at millimeter wave for range of frequencies. This one's a little more confusing to talk about. I'll start off with the simple part of it first, is we're using 16.6 .6 mil 4350B for the transmission lines, and we have smooth low pro copper and rougher standard copper. So you can see that the smoother copper is lower loss, as you would expect. If this happened to be a much thinner circuit, then these curves would be very different. Uh, but being that it's 16.6 .6 mil thick, you're not going to see quite the difference you will from rough and smooth copper. Anyway, the point here is, is uh, I've read a lot of different things in academia where they normally say that you do not want to have a circuit feature that's a quarter wavelength or less, uh, or more anyway, for uh, resonances. And these resonances can uh, cause spurious modes. And the spurious modes can be due to the resonance of like a conductor width being the right width, or the thickness of the circuit being the right thickness or different things like that. And the spurious modes basically will interfere with the desired quasi-TEM wave and it give you this uh, noise out here in the insertion loss curve. So in this case, the conductor width is uh, 0.036 mils. And as that relates to uh, wavelength at different frequencies, a quarter wavelength is about out here in the noise where there's a lot of insertion loss noise. But if you maintain around the eighth wavelength rule, eighth wavelength or less, that's actually a good rule to go by for a millimeter wave to avoid these spurious modes and different interference patterns. 
So this is another reason why a thinner circuit is used at millimeter wave range of frequencies because when it's thinner, the conductor width is naturally going to get more narrow so you can maintain the same impedance. A more narrow conductor means that this eighth wavelength feature will move farther out in frequency and not cause you interference patterns at millimeter wave. Uh, some of the material properties, I'm going to go through this quickly because the next slide actually gives you a little more detail. But in general, for millimeter wave, you want to have pretty smooth copper. Dissipation factor is good to be minimal or low. Um, even though the conductor effects really do dominate when it's a thin circuit, the dissipation factor still comes into play when you get much higher frequency. Uh, moisture absorption is a big deal. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, dielectric constant tolerance, that can be really important because some of the millimeter wave uh, applications are very sensitive to phase uh, differences and having a constant or a consistent dielectric constant is really important. Uh, TCDK, temperature coefficient of dielectric constant, that's something that every material has and that's how much the dielectric constant changes with a change in temperature and having a minimal TCDK is good. General rule of thumb is if you're less than about 50 parts per million per degree C, that's a pretty good TCDK. And then finally the woven glass uh, issue, as you're at millimeter wave range of frequencies, the pitch of the glass can actually cause some problems called the glass weave effect. Also, there's uh, issues with a uh, microvias. A lot of times the millimeter wave applications have microvias and the glass can uh, be troublesome there. So a good example to look at for the right properties is our 5 mil 3003. And I'm not really a salesy guy, but it's, this is just something that's been adopted throughout the industry pretty widely. And that is the 5 mil 3003 just has the right combination of uh, material properties. So if you want to learn about material properties that are good for millimeter wave, this is a good one to look at. So we have rolled copper that's available here, which is very smooth. So smooth copper is good. This patient factor, 0 0.001, that's considered very low loss. So that's good. The moisture absorption, 0.04. That's also a big deal. Dielectric constant tolerance plus or minus 0 0.04, that's very tightly controlled. So that's good for having consistent phase response, things like that. TCDK is just about as good as you can get, just about zero. And then the woven glass uh, issues with having woven glass for microvias and uh, electrical issues, that's pretty much not an issue because 3003 has no woven glass. So some charts and some measurements to talk about. 5 mil 3003 here, this is ED copper versus rolled copper out to about 95 gigahertz. This is 5 mil 3003 with rolled copper, 5 mil 3003 with ED copper. And you can see there's a very dramatic difference in insertion loss there. The uh, rolled copper is about 1 dB or less than 1 dB out around 80 gigahertz. ED copper, uh, the circuits with ED copper about 2.2 dB per inch at around 80 gigahertz, which is considered very good actually. Now the moisture absorption issue uh, comes into play sometimes and there's a lot of different variables that I can throw in and one of them is insertion loss. So I did a study looking at uh, a set of circuits on RO 3003 5 mil and then also a 5 mil competitive material and what I did was test it at room temperature and then I exposed it to 8585. 8585 is 85 degrees C and 85 percent humidity. I did that for 72 hours. And the difference of insertion loss of 79 gigahertz is about 0.1 dB per inch on the 5 mil 3003 materials between room temperature and 85-85 conditioning for 72 hours. And then the difference of the competitive materials is about 0.8, so that's about eight times different. And this is again about 79 gigahertz, and that's also room temperature versus 85-85. So moisture absorption can be a pretty big deal for insertion loss. I've also got the same curve for phase response, it's pretty dramatic as well. Unfortunately, I ran out of time, so I think I might have a minute or so for quick questions. Can you compare the 3003 with the 5880? And yes. And what's the thickness of your uh, copper? On yeah, board? the difference between 3003 and 5880, actually the 5880, if it's using the same copper, the 5880 usually has better loss, lower insertion loss. Uh, the 5880 is actually really good because uh, millimeter wave frequencies is thin. The 5880, as you get thicker, it can be a little more problematic just because of the nature of PTFE. Um, and then for uh, copper roughnesses, it's got the same rolled copper as the 3003 does, so it's very smooth. You're talking about the, your experiments were in a half an ounce? Oh, yes, yes, half ounce copper. Half ounce. Yep. No other questions? Well, thank you very much. Have a good day.